Hi everyone, my name is Aaron. I'm the other team of AI scientists, doctors, and marketing specialists. Also, in our team, we have a tech person. So, today's presentation is about social prescribing and metaverse. So, you might wonder what, uh, what's social prescribing or what's the metaverse? So, basically, social prescribing is a scheme that's been running in the UK for many, many years. And around 2019 is when it kind of become more and more formalized where it became a national contract where you have what we call the social prescribing services where you have a social prescribing coworker, a care coordinator, and the health and well-being coaches. But it does answer the question of what is social prescribing. Think of it that instead of going to a doctor for medication, you might go to a doctor to just to have advice because you just had a relationship breakdown with your partner. And it's been studied in 2015 that 20% of GP appointment were for no medical reason. So in a nutshell, that's where they integrate its role, so that if the doctor or a pharmacist, because I work in GP surgery, identifies a person suffering from a social uh, issue, I can direct them and make a referral to our in-house link worker, and the social prescriber would go to the patient house, have a discussion with them, but then create a care plan based on what matters to them. So we should think the conversation from what's wrong with you, what's the matter with you to what matters to you. So in that we're creating a care plan, connecting them to different community assets, which could be a dance class, because I'm a dancer, a cooking class, uh, going to the church, a walk to the park. So that's social prescribing. And it's been found out that the benefit of social prescribing referred to patients that do benefit from it, reduce uh, a reduction to A&E and hospital admission. And right now it's available for 100% of the population using the universal personal care. But the issue is that in UK there's about 18.6% of the UK population are from the younger demographic, being 12 to 15 years old. If I was to go to my cousin who's like 11 or 12, it's like, do you have any social issue? Do you, do you want to learn how to cook? They probably look at me like, well, I'm going to do that, but my parents should do that. But then there's many studies done for adults for senior citizen, but then a recent study, a recent study released by Caitlin, which is like a influence in social prescribing, found out that we need more evidence and services available for the pediatric population, and the world of pa pediatric social prescribing. So why us? So like I already explained in the beginning, we are paid, there's a pharmacist, there's two doctors, marketing specialist, AR special from Cambridge, Right, uh, so basically, in a nutshell, if I just show you a quick demo that we did. Okay. Can you make it bigger? The screen. So imagine a scenario where you've got your child uh, playing a, a popular video game, and they go through it, and they find the video game stops at the point, asks them what they want to pursue, and the social prescribing habit, they click on that, and it sends them to and then it can approve the source uh, tool for helping them to explore their emotions through that. So that was a proof of concept using a uh, platform that's already NHS accredited. But the concept is to have an environment, a metaverse platform that's already engaging with young people. Like in, can you make it smaller? In, uh, so imagine a scenario where you've got your child. So there is Roblox. You may or may not have heard of it. So but basically, so more children are spending more time in Roblox than TikTok or Instagram. Therefore, you're more likely to engage them with social um, prescribing content in a virtual environment like Roblox. So similarly, with SpongeBob, we can go and speak to him for social issue. You could have this kind of prompt between different gameplay between Roblox. But there's just not just Roblox. I'm using Roblox because that's just an example. I think from the previous graphs, there's about a million of users. So the idea is to deliver social prescribing prompt education material in a 3D space, in a metaverse platform. And our next step is definitely to broaden the design team, which include English with different specifiers, which include like the NHS England team, a different game company, like four time producers, people that create Roblox, um, work with different GP surgeries to have potentially the GP surgery physically but on the website they have the digital twin of the GP surgery and the Roblox experience so that young kid can access the Roblox experience 
to understand some of the social determinants of health, which can include how to do uh, manage the budget, financial literacy, and also how to do physical activities, the importance of having fruits and vegetables. So we kind of can find the experience of learning more about uh, public health at the young age that I want to grow. Thanks, can you? Yeah, right. Okay, questions. Do we have any questions from the panel? Yeah? Really interesting. I mean, my understanding is that it's uh, an under research area, so she prescribing for children, that's what you try to solve. Do you know if there's any current analog method of researching this topic? traditional academics that they research in this topic. So when you mean, I like, do you mean like accredited questionnaire for young people? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yes, so for example, there is different organizations in the key, uh, for example, Social Prescribing Network, that has been founded in 2016, then the National Academy for Social Prescribing, founded in 2019. Also you have Social Prescribing Youth Network, has done different studies in collaboration with the University of East London on showing the benefit of social prescribing for the younger demographic. And then you also have different digital social prescribing platform, like Access Elemental, that has done a study with um, university students to show the benefit, because students may experience mental health deterioration with exams, and they've shown that having social prescribing referred down to them improve their health and well-being. So in terms of accredited questionnaire, you have the ONS4, the Office of National, National Statistics 4, which is free, which kind of like ask you four questions and you give it a score. Then you do have a licensable questionnaire like MyCo, which is my concern and well-being, which is owned by Meaningful Measure. But then you have the Wellbeing Star, uh, you have the PAM, Patient Activity Measure Score, that can be used. So, I would repeat the question for everybody. So the question they're saying is, how would I like John to be replicating what they're doing already? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, so uh, that um, <laughs> kind of asked yourself a new question, but <laughs> that also how do you envision your method is going to be incorporated into these big academies as already mm -hmm. well? Uh, so, I, so I guess for me it's not about competing, it's about collaboration because I've been in social prescribing since 2016 so I kind of know what the heavy weight in social prescribing globally but that's a different story. Uh, but the idea is to shift the level of interface from paper to internet to spatial computing because you got all this hype about the Apple Vision Pro, MetaQuest 3 and all potentially other manufacturers, smart glasses, via headset. I'm just trying to kind of create the 3D version of it so that it makes it more accessible, especially to young people, right? Like on YouTube, you have like 360 videos, right? So you could have prompt similar to what I've done for ONS4, which is free, or any other accredited questionnaire in well-being across the globe. Uh, so the idea is not about competing or cooperating, it's about collaborative between different universities, because for me, uh, social prescribing is part of social determinant of health, which is also accepted by the WHO. And the person that kind of kicks out the whole thing is Professor Michael Marmot. And I highly recommend everyone to read his book, The Health Gap, if you're into public health. Thank you. Uh, oh, how long have you got left? Uh, 40 seconds. 40 seconds, okay. Commissioner, yeah. thank you. <laughs>